Hi everybody, this is Drew again, and this is part two of my videos on horsepower and torque and how you can use a bicycle to very easily demonstrate what these two words actually mean. In part two of this video, I want to talk about a geared system, just like we have in our vehicles, where torque and horsepower are created by the engine and sent through a set of gears in order to turn the wheels. Again, the similarities between a bicycle and a vehicle are very similar in concept, although slightly different or greatly different in application. Obviously on a bike, we don't have an engine. Now, what we do have is the rider, and the rider is what provides that horsepower and torque to get these wheels to turn. So you can think of the legs of the rider, the part that's actually pushing that crank, that's just like the pistons on a vehicle. So in your internal combustion engines, you have fuel that is detonated to create force that pushes those pistons up and down, which in turn turns the crank. Now, in order to turn the wheels, we send the energy that's created at the crank through a system of gears. And the higher the gear that we have, the faster we can get this wheel to spin. Now, as we go up through our gears, we lose the ability to apply as much torque. So in first gear, we're applying a whole lot of torque. This is what's gonna get you off the line when you hit the accelerator from a dead stop. This is what's going to pull a trailer. That's why we like to hold our trailers in lower gears for longer, because we can apply a whole lot of torque to get that weight of the vehicle and potentially the trailer up and moving. Now, in part one of my video series, I explained horsepower and torque real easily. So real quick, let's just uh, recap that. Uh, torque was the amount of energy that you applied in a circle. So remember, a little bit of torque turns the wheel a little bit. A lot of torque, a lot more energy, gets that wheel to turn even more. And then as I apply that torque over time, or the rate that I apply that torque, that's horsepower. So the bigger the number of torque, the more power I can put behind turning that wheel. The bigger the number in horsepower, the faster I can apply that torque. Okay, so let's talk about the gearing system. Now on a bike and on a vehicle, uh, all of your gears have teeth. And the teeth are all the same size on the crank as they are in the gears. In this case on a bike we call this a cassette, but it works just like a transmission in theory. So the teeth are the same size, they're the same distance apart. That's very important. What's important, what's also important here is the size of the gear itself. So again my crank, I only have a one speed up front, so this is very similar to the, the, the crank on the engine, is for every one rotation here if my gear was the same size as the crank, for every one rotation here, I should get one rotation of the wheel. But in first gear, notice how much bigger this gear is than the crank. So for every one rotation of the crank, I'm gonna get less than one rotation of the wheel, but I'm gonna be able to apply a lot of power to that wheel. And let me visually demonstrate that by setting this up. I'm gonna put both the reflector and the pedal in the 12 o'clock position. Now, again, the legs of the vehicle, that's the pistons of the engine, that's what's turning the crank. So I'm gonna turn this crank one time, and let's see in first gear how far around this makes it towards a complete rotation. So there's one rotation of the crank, and you'll notice we're at about the seven o'clock position down here. So obviously we did not make a full rotation. But what I'm going to do is I'm gonna drop this bike into about fourth gear. Fourth gear is about a one-to-one -one ratio as, as far as the crank size to the gear size. So for every time I turn the crank, I should get one rotation, or very close to it, out of my wheel. So let's put this, this bike in fourth gear. There we go. Okay, let's run our same test again. I'll put the pedals in the 12 o'clock position. I'll put the reflector in the 12 o'clock position. And again, being that these are almost the same size, I should get about one rotation here as I do here. So let's do that. So there's one rotation. So it's pretty close, not exactly, but pretty close. 
If you remember that big first gear, we got down here to about the seven o'clock position. So see how much further we made it through only one rotation of the crank. Now in these higher gears, as I mentioned before, we're not able to apply quite as much power or uh, torque here, but we are able to get that wheel spinning faster and faster, getting us up to speed. So let's now drop this into, in this case, 11th gear. Uh, in our vehicles, we have six, eight, 10 speed transmissions. Uh, we have lots of different options here. On this bike, we do have 11 though. So we'll take this down to the 11th gear. And this is by a lot the smallest gear on this bike. It's only about that big around. So for every rotation of my crank, I should get a lot more than one rotation of this back wheel. So let's do our test one more time and let's see. I'll put the crank in 12 o'clock position and the wheel in the 12 o'clock position. Let's see how many rotations we get out of this by only turning this crank one time. And again, this is going to make your vehicle go much faster. Uh, look, I've reached a full rotation on the back wheel and I'm only about a third of the way through a rotation on the crank. There's another rotation, that's two, and I'm about three quarters of the way through here. There's one rotation, and I've made it another two thirds around. So about one and two thirds rotations of the back wheel for every rotation of the crank here, just like in your vehicle. This is gonna help with fuel economy. This is also going to be your top speed here. However fast you can keep this thing turning based on the number of turns you have going on up here, that's gonna dictate how fast you can get that vehicle to go. So I hope you found these vehicles or these videos informative. Uh, you can use a bike in dealerships if you wanna lug one around, that's up to you, but it, it is really a great tool to understand very simple concepts of horsepower and torque to demonstrate what those are. More than just an explanation, you have a good, uh, uh, you have a good prop right here that will help you out. Hope you enjoyed the videos and thanks again for watching.